Hey, it's me, your boomer consumer. You can see I'm back on camera. I know it's been a while, but hey, I wanted to talk to you today about the new work and gaming system that I just purchased. And this is the Alienware M15R3 gaming laptop. But guess what? I'm going to be using it for work and for play both. So why did I buy a laptop to begin with? Well, my Alienware desktop, uh, it's an older machine. It's the R2 model. I think it's around 2015, it's developing some problems. It's huge. It weighs 62 pounds. And I wanted something that was going to be much more portable, but yet extremely powerful. And so I was looking at uh, creator laptops. I was looking at different gaming laptops. I wanted something that had a lot of power to it because I'm not going to be just doing the work stuff, which I could have done on a lot less, a lot less expensive laptop. But I also wanted to play Flight Simulator 2020, which can be very, very demanding game on hardware. So I really needed something very powerful. And as I was looking around at different laptops, and I was looking at some of the MSI Creator laptops, and I was looking at just a ton of different ones, this uh, caught my eye, the M15R3. However, the price was pretty high. Well, come Cyber Monday, I was able to snag this thing for over $700 off. All in, I was at $1,500 plus tax and shipping for this laptop. Okay, so let's talk about the specs of this particular machine I bought. First, it is a 15.6 inch display, 300 megahertz uh, response rate on this thing. So it's definitely a gaming laptop and full HD. It's not 4K or anything like that. 100% Adobe RGB color space. I probably won't be doing much video editing on it. Uh, I do use Final Cut Pro mostly. However, I still like um, its uh, Vegas Pro. I still enjoy working with that from time to time. It comes with a Intel Core i7 10875H CPU. That's an 8-core CPU. 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM a one terabyte in uh, NVMe SSD, very, very fast SSD on this thing. And then finally for video, it is an RTX 2070 with eight gigabytes of DDR6 memory. Not the super, not the max Q, that's the 2070. So a very potent computer. And again, I purchased this for right at $1,500. So on the back of the laptop, you, you have this custom RGB lighting effect. And the thing about uh, Alienware is you either love or hate the uh, effects and the lighting. It doesn't bother me one way or another. As far as ports go, on the back, you have HDMI, you have mini display port, you have a Thunderbolt 3 port. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. A proprietary graphics adapter port, your power. And then this is for cooling, these little honeycomb shaped things here. And then on the left side of the laptop, you have a Ethernet port, one gigabit. You have a USB port, combo headphone, microphone jack. And then the ports on the right side, you have a micro SD card reader and a couple more USB ports. And so you got plenty of ports on here. And then another thing on the front, this is where you have a couple speakers. So there are speakers on the bottom and then in the front. And by the way, I think the speakers sound pretty decent for a laptop. They're not in the same league as the uh, new MacBook Pro, but hey, <laughs> this is a Windows machine. And the price is quite a bit different, at least the price I paid for it. Okay, let's talk about the unboxing of this machine for just a minute. So it, it comes in a nice white Alienware box. And when you lift the lid, there is your laptop right there. And uh, it, the weight surprised me a little bit. I mean, it's under five pounds. But um, just the build quality felt pretty solid taking it out of the box. And then there's a note from Alienware kind of giving you a little bit of background about the machine or about Alienware. And then there's a packet that's got a quick start guide 
And then there's some warranty info on there. And then there is the accessory box, and that has a 240 watt power adapter, as well as a US uh, style plug. And that's what you get in the box. I just want to talk about a few other things on here. On the top, this is for cooling. I thought this is where some speakers were at, but this is actually for ventilation. The keyboard, of course, you have RGB lighting effects on your keyboard with the Alienware Control Center. Perfectly fine with the blue. I think it looks great. But what I like is the feel of the keyboard. It, it's got a very nice keyboard, nice travel on the keys, nice and soft, but yet it's just hard to describe. Let me put it to you this way. I've tried a lot of different keyboards on a lot of different laptops, and I think this is one of the best feeling keyboards uh, that I've used on a laptop. But mind you, probably 90% of the time, I'll be using uh, my Logitech gaming laptop uh, or gaming keyboard with this laptop, and it'll be sitting on the desktop. So I won't be using this keyboard very much. The trackpad, nice and smooth glass. The gestures work fine on here. Uh, if it's anything, I haven't found anything wrong with it yet, but again, this is still relatively, this is not a review, by the way. This is not a review. I'm just kind of explaining to you why I chose an Alienware M15. And some of it was definitely based on the price, but I just got so much for the money, and I like Alienware Windows machines. And believe me, at that time, I don't think I could have found anything comparable as far as technical specifications in that $1,500 price range at that point in time. The display is nice and bright. It, it hits, I think, a peak of around 300 nits. So it's just not HDR and all that stuff, but it's a very fast response rate um, display. And if you're going to be playing your, you know, your, your games on here, you want that. You want as fast as refresh rate as you can. Um, these do come available in a 4K, uh, 60 hertz panel, I think OLED, but uh, this is plenty good enough. This is actually going to be used more with my LG ultra wide monitor anyway, so uh, nice display and certainly clear, sharp, bright enough for me, no problem. Just think it, the whole thing, this lunar wide, I just love the looks of this thing. I think it looks really badass, I, I do. But again, that could be a love-hate thing. Maybe you hate it, and that's all right, too. There's other options out there for sale. Uh, now, I said this was part of a system. So, the next thing I bought for this is the CalDigit TS3+. Plus. Now, this is a Thunderbolt dock, a Thunderbolt 3 dock, and picked it up for around 200 bucks on Cyber Monday. I think I got like 10% off or something. But this is, let's just go ahead and unbox it. I haven't even taken it out of its box. We're going to set the laptop up to the side a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring this out. And uh, let's see what, what we got here. All right. All right, come on. There we go. Thank you from CalDigit. Everybody's putting these in their uh, boxes anymore. All right. Looks like we've got the, looks like some safety information on here. Yeah, warnings, that kind of thing. And rubberized feet for installation if you want to put it horizontally as opposed to vertically, which I'm not sure how I'm going to arrange this just yet. All right, and there's your power plug. And then you get a Thunderbolt 3 cable. Would you believe it? Some of these docks, you've actually got to, uh, you have got to actually buy the Thunderbolt cable separately. It's kind of crazy after you spend a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay, it's 0.7 meter cable, if you want to know. Plenty long enough. Like, what is that, about 20, 27 inches? No, something like that. Long enough, plenty long enough. That's nice. That's a nice touch to include that. So we got the Thunderbolt cable. My pet cat, Buddy, is just woke up from his nap. 
and Cal Digit Power Brick. There we go. So we have the Power Brick. And then kind of a diagram of how to set this thing up. These are pretty easy. And then inside, let's see if we can just, there we go. And then this is the dock itself. 15 different ports on here. All right, got it out of its plastic. You have a UHS-2 SD card slot, so really fast reading your SD cards. Actually, I think I'm going to pick a second one of these up for my Mac Mini because I've been using it for work for the last couple months. Doesn't run my work software the way I need it to. That's why I need a good Windows machine anyway. Uh, you have your combo. You have a separate audio and input and output jack. Uh, USB type C, but this is a the five gigabit uh, connection or five megabit, and then the same, yeah, yeah, five gigabits, uh, USB C, and then USB type A on the front. On the back, really, where all the action is full size display port, you have your Ethernet port, optical audio out, USB. See, 10 gig, and that's going to be important. I'll explain why in just in a minute. Some more USB uh, type A ports. Got one, two, three, four of those. The port from your computer to the dock. And then you have an extra pass through Thunderbolt 3 port. And so you can set it vertically, you can use it horizontally. Metal finish. Yeah, I think this will do the job. This really gave me the ports that I need with this system. I think that'll be money well spent on the long haul. Now, the last feature of this system is okay. Flight Simulator 2020 is one of the big reasons um, for the kind of doing it this way. It is a huge, huge game. I think the Basic installs around 150 gigabytes, and it's just constantly growing through patches and that kind of thing. Well, with a one terabyte internal SSD, that would be fine, but it's going to grow. I'm going to add some other games to it, so that could be an issue. But again, the flight simulator is growing at a really quick rate. That's why I purchased the Samsung SSD, the T7. This is a gigabyte or yeah, one gig of store, or one terabyte rather, of storage. But it works with USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2, which is a 10 gigabit, uh, or 10 gigabyte connection. So it's gonna be very, very fast on the reads and writes on this thing. Not really gonna do a full review on it. I've already opened it. because I just wanted to see how fast it is. Take my word for it. This thing screams. If uh, you're in the market for some external storage, uh, this thing is the way to go. Just going through the box though, got your cables, got this pamphlet right on here. These are really very fast. And then here is the drive itself. There it is. Very small, very lightweight, very compact. And they come in different colors. Got this gray one right here. But yeah, so this will actually house all my games and all my work related stuff. And if I edit some videos, will be on the internal one terabyte SSD. That is the new system. And uh, I think it's going to last me for quite some time. Very pleased to get it all oh, after recording this video. Actually, I'm going to tear down the, the, some stuff and put this system together and get it ready to go. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, why this boomer bought a gaming machine, essentially is what it is, but for both work and gaming. Based on the price, I like Alienware laptops and I like their desktops for window machines, for pre-built, etc. Of course, I've never met anybody that built their own laptop. I suppose it's possible, but uh, 
Got it for a great price. Lots of great specs on it. I like the looks of it. I like the feel of the keyboard. The display is nice. It's extremely fast. Should do me for a long, long time. Alienware laptops are really pretty much top of the line gaming laptops when you're looking for that sort of thing. There are competitors, of course, that are equally as good, if not better, but uh, they do make a fine laptop for the most part. Bruce Naylor, your boomer consumer, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.